Hey guys, thanks for showing up for another Mug Up Monday and spending a few moments of your day with me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say for yesterday, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, especially my dad, who um, has installed in me at a very young age love for the great outdoors and uh, has helped mold me into the man that I've become today so I can be the best father I can be as well. So thank you very much, Dad, for that, and I love you very much. Today's episode is going to be a good one. i got a few quick uh, topics I'm going to touch on. i got three different random topics, and we'll discuss that just in a moment, and then that'll be followed by a guest speaker. And uh, you're going to want to stay tuned for this because that's some very interesting information that a lot of people don't know about, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, where um, the spiritual side of the, the force and science kind of comes together hand in hand and it's, a, it's an, a very awesome topic. So this is an episode you're definitely going to want to see. I'm just going to get the jet boil on the go there now. We've had a couple of scorching days so um, everything's kind of dried out so we're, at, we're in a fire ban time right now. Uh, but we'll get the jet boil going, get a cup of tea on the go and we'll start. So stay tuned guys. It's got raspberry tea. Man, some state of stouts. So the first topic we want to talk about is um, a, a, a technique that some birds, specifically robins, ravens, crows, cardinals, and a few other selective ones, but mostly them, um, it's a technique that they use called anting, where they'll lie on an ant's nest, splay out their, their wings and their tail feathers and allow the ants to crawl up through their feathers and all over them while they shake their head vigorously to, uh, to rid themselves of getting any in their, in their eyes or their, or their beaks or anything like that. What happens is they'll agitate the ants and the ants will react by releasing formic acid. Formic acid is then used by the birds as an insecticide, uh, miticide, a bacterial side, a fungicide, so essentially just stops a lot of nasty things from happening to the birds. The, uh, the formic acid cleans them up, it, it'll rid their, their, their uh, bodies of parasites, of bacteria, of funguses that might be growing under the feathers, especially when they're molting, which is pre pretty interesting when you really think about it that they, they figure this out. So my next topic is going to be on a small microorganism that you cannot see with the naked eye called a rotifer. Rotifers have been known in recent years that they can be frozen and then defrosted and they come right back to life. Scientists in Russia actually dug up three meters of permafrost and realized that there was a bunch of these rotifers in the ground. They then successfully defrosted a rotifer carbon dated back to over 24,000 years ago and it came back to life. It went from being in a frozen sleep to being alive in the matter of minutes, which is absolutely amazing when you think about it. The fact that organisms that were alive 24,000 years ago are able to come out of sleep in a dormant state and just pick up where they left off today is absolutely amazing. It's mind-boggling when you really come to think about it. Absolutely mind-boggling. So they found a uh, new type of rhino dated back 26.5 million years ago. Obviously they're not with us today. However, these type of rhinos they found in the Tibetan Plateau um, have a skull about a yard long, a full yard long. Pretty monstrous. 
This particular rhino would weigh 24 tons, which is four times the amount of a modern day elephant. They were huge. The, the height of this animal was 16 feet at the shoulders and then had about a seven foot neck on top of that. This particular type of rhino has more of a small trunk, like a taper, uh, not necessarily a big horn like more of the modern day uh, rhinos. Just to put in perspective, uh, giraffes are only, well, I say only, but giraffes are between 14 and 19 feet tall. So this thing was bigger than modern day giraffes. It was taller than modern day giraffes and bigger than modern day elephants by a long shot. If you guys found that interesting, you will definitely find the next segment interesting. Charlie, you want a full cup? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, to the Backwoods Barbarian. This is part of his uh, Mug Up Mondays, and as you've seen, my buddy Wayne just poured me up some chaga tea. I go out and I collect uh, chaga. I haven't been doing it for years. And Wayne, how's that chaga taste? Excellent. <laughs> and it's fitting that we're talking about chaga. Chaga is a fungus. And what I'm going to talk to you guys about right now is the wood wide web. That's right. Not the world wide web, the wood wide web. Believe it or not, out here in this forest, this tree right here is actually talking to this tree right here and that tree and those trees and all these plants and how it does it and all the plants on the, on the forest floor and how that does it is true a fungus called mycelia. Mycelia is uh, an underground internet. It's just like the internet and the organisms that give the most to the mycelia will get the best service, kind of like, uh, like your internet provider. If you're going to pay for fiber op and the wide band, you're going to get better internet service. Same thing happens here in, in the forest. And uh, scientists, when they, when they found this out, they, they ran tests. And what they did is uh, they introduced an aphid, and if you don't know what an aphid is, just take a, take a look right here. And this is what the aphids look like when they're actually eaten on the plants. So what happened was the science, uh, scientists introduced the aphids to, uh, to some plants on the forest floor, and right away it communicated through, through the underground wood wide web to the other plants around that it was under attack. And what the other plants did is they chemically produced a, um, a chemical that was kind of pungent and repelled the aphids from, from going and attacking them. So out here in the forest floor, we have what is called the wood wide web. And here I'll show you what it looks like. We'll just dig into the forest floor here and you'll see, well, I'm hoping to see, but you can see these little white strands right here. This is, this is the internet of the forest. I don't know if you can see that. That is your, your my, mycelia. And it goes out and it branches out into all the networks. And it goes to these, these little plants. It goes, it goes to all the plants on the, on the forest floor, you know, and all the trees, all the living organisms are tapped into the, the mycelia. That is how uh, the, the, the wood wide web communicates. And in Mi'kmaq, we have, we have a saying. It's uh, probably the shortest, most humblest phrase or, or prayer that you'll ever, you'll ever say. And it's Msnogama. And what that means is to all my relations. And when you say this, you are, it's very, very humbling because you, you, you are acknowledging that you are no less than or greater than anything or anyone around you. We are all equal. 
We all come from the same source. We are all, we are all one. And it goes to show that when we work together, like the mycelia works with all the living organisms in the forest, we are stronger. And we, and we can withstand attacks from things such as aphids. So I hope you enjoyed that little segment. And uh, thanks uh, Daniel for having me on your channel. And I hope uh, it just brought a little, uh, shared a little information that our ancestors all knew. They knew that we we're all connected and everything was connected. So mm snogama to all my relations. Well, there we have it guys that's uh that was an awesome segment by nl ghost wolf uh link in the description for him and and i really appreciate him taking the time to share a segment on, on a passion of his and uh to, to to teach us some of these things and to talk about it and to bring his perspective into it which mixes a bit of the spiritual side and a bit of the science side uh, uh, where we can all come to common ground on uh, on this type of thing and uh, I appreciate it very much. And if there's anyone else out there who would like to do a segment on Mug Up Monday, shoot me a message, tell me the topic, and we'll get started on it. That little thing there that just flew towards me, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I'm going to punch the next one that comes next to me because the last one I grabbed, it bit me. So, oh, it's in the water. Good. I hope you drown. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one, and take care and be safe.